العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. أما بعد، first and foremost, all thanks and all praise to Allah سبحانه وتعالى who enables the past to understand and worship Allah سبحانه وتعالى the istiqama upon good deeds. And Allah سبحانه وتعالى retain this istiqama until we leave this earth and then we guarantee from Him the reward for it. Just want to briefly talk about uh, this one short verse of Surah Al-Fatiha, Ihdi Nasirat Al-Mustaqeem. A very, very brief verse, barely a couple of words in there, but a very, very important words and very, very powerful words. As I mentioned to you before, that Surah Al-Fatiha is a dua. The purpose of Surah Al-Fatiha being revealed is a dua. But on top of that is other things as well. Surah Al-Fatiha is shifa. Reciting Surah Al-Fatiha brings shifa to a person. His companions of the Prophet وسلم, one of the companions, they were traveling and a person was bit by a poisonous animal and uh, they were suffering from the poison. And the companion recited Surah Al-Fatiha and blew over and they were cured. So this is a proven ruqya, what we call in our language, dam. You know, people ask, who do we go to for dam? You do it yourself first. The first thing you do is, you do it yourself. Because you are going to care about your problem more than any other person. Your next door neighbor will not care about your problem as much as you care about it. Never mind some person across the town, across the, the, the city, across the, the country even. So the Prophet ﷺ told us to, for us to make the effort ourselves. And of course, you know, you get great blessings from great people. No doubt about that. But let's not forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us certain gifts. One of those gifts is Surah Al-Fatiha, which can be recited for Ruqya to cure the person. So I just want to briefly talk about this verse, إِذِنَ السَّرَابِ الْمُسْلَطِيمِ As I mentioned before, Surah Fatiha is the dua. So one of the things we're taught is to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turn to Him before we ask our needs. And when we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should turn to Him in praise or we can recite some of His names. And when we have certain needs, we should match the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to our needs. This is one of the etiquettes of dua. So if someone wants guidance, they should say, Ya Allah, Ya Hadi. The one who guides, the one who wants forgiveness, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Ghafoor. The one who wants mercy, Ya Rahim, Ya Rahman, Irham Lana. Be merciful to us. And whatever you want, Ya Shafi, the one who needs a cure. So whatever you need, you begin by connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you use those attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to connect to what you need. But if a person doesn't know any of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Fatiha taught us the most comprehensive of his names. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Rabb is one of the most comprehensive, if not the comprehensive, of all the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why when you look at the du'as in the Quran, they begin with Rabbana, Ya Rabbi, Rabbi, O my Lord, O our Lord. Because it's the most comprehensive. And the word Rabb has so many different facets to it. First of all, Rabb means the master, and on the opposing side of the Abd who is a slave. Our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is our Rabb. But Rabb also means the one who provides for the needs. Rabb means the one who takes care of the person. So He is our Rabb in all of these different ways. And in Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah taught us this one dua. And that's not to say you can't ask more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has treasures which are unending. You can ask, you will tire out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never tire out. He taught us this one dua, one thing to ask for because it's the most important. He taught us, إِهْدِنَ السِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ The dua guides us along the right path, guides us along the straight path. Because hidayah and guidance is a fountain to all of Allah's favors. Everything sprouts from this fountain of hidayah. If a person does not have hidayah and guidance, then they don't have any future. إِهْدِنَ السِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guides us along the straight path. The balanced path. There's only one path. And that's the path which the prophets came and guided us to. Okay. So don't be fooled by anyone who says that this religion is okay, that religion is okay, this religion is okay. It's about what's in people's hearts, it's about the intentions. If that was the case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have left us as we were. Allah wouldn't have sent any prophets. It's not about that. If you want to be guided, then you need to follow the prophets that came with the guidance. So, إِهْدِنَ السِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ reminds us of that as well. And hidayah only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No human being can give you guidance. They can give you time, they can give you words. 
or whether those words mm. sink in their heart or get the light of guidance is there in your heart, that's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give that. Nobody else can give it. Right? The prophets, they were guaranteed, gu- guaranteed guidance for the people. The prophets prayed for people to be guided. They were not guaranteed guidance for any individuals amongst the community. Never mind any person who's below a prophet. Guidance only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah calls in Surah Al-Fatiha to turn to him for guidance. And guidance is the greatest gift. There's one that mentions one verse of the Quran that highlights the importance of guidance. That when the people enter paradise, they will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when they thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're going to thank him for guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that the people in paradise will say, وَقَالُوا The people will say, Alhamdulillah illati hadana li hadha. All praise to the one who guided us to this. وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَرِي لَوْلَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ And had it not been for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guiding us, we would not be guided. Allah. That was not from us, that was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, the thing that you have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for and praise Him for is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us guidance and maintain that guidance. Amen. Um, inshallah, there's more to speak about, but I'll stop there. There's a brother Ikhlaq who just wants to just take one minute of your time, that's it, and he's got a short message for you. You can just blend in your ears for a minute. Mm. 